If you're a .NET developer, there are often times where you want to change the TCP port that your application or API is listening on. Searching for answers reveals lots of different options from changing code, app settings, command line arguments, or VS Code or Visual Studio config files. This leads to confusion around which is the right answer, especially when you consider how you might override this port when you get to deployment environments. So today we're going to go through in order from bottom to top all the different ways that you can set the port in .NET. Okay, so here I am in VS Code and I've got a simple web API.NET project and literally all I've done is commented out or changed the application URL variable in the launch settings that it gives us by default, just so that that's not being applied by VS Code. Other than that, it's all default stuff in all of these files. And we've just got a simple hello world web API. So if I run this up inside VS Code, we see that out of the box, it's listening on HTTP localhost 5000, and we can prove it works. Um, I've got HTTP yak installed as an extension, um, which means I can just run some simple HTTP requests and there I get my hello world. So the API is up and running on localhost port 5000. So now let's go and override these ports and see the order that we can change them in. So the first one that we're going to go and change is the one that I just said I commented out. So if I come over here and I come to the first profile in here that is of command project, that's what VS Code is going to pick up. So I can comment that back in and I, you can see I've got that set to 5001. If I now run this up again, we'll see that that is going to override the default of 5000. So my API is now listening on localhost 5001. So the next thing that we can do is add in an environment variable. So the environment variable we can add in is ASP.NET Core URLs. So let's run that up. So that's taken hold, so that's good. Okay, there is another environment variable that we can set, which is the .NET URLs one. So we'll set that and run that up. And we're now on 5003. Then we can jump over to the terminal and we can do a .NET run. And as part of .NET run, we can specify the URLs property. And we see that that's up and running on 5004. There is another command line argument that we can specify for .NET run, which is the dash dash URLs. So we're now on 5005 and now we can jump over into the code and start changing it there. So inside the code, we can specify against the builder, web host, use URLs and either localhost or all ports. Doesn't matter. We'll see the port change. So we're now listening on 5006 and just to add to confusion, there is another way that we can set the port in code using configure Kestrel. And what we'll see here is that this gives us a warning that it's overriding 5006 that's been specified and it's binding to 5007 instead. So the next place that we can set the port is in our app settings and we can specify Kestrel endpoints HTTP URL. And this is where things start to get a little bit interesting. And we can see from the trace, it's still listening on 5007 that we specified in the code, but it's now also listening on 5008 that we've specified in our app settings. So we'll always be listening on 5007 while we've got this code in our program.cs, basically. We can then also put that same set up in our development or environment specific override of our settings. So we'll change that to 5009 and run this bad boy up. And now we see that we're still listening on 5007, but we're also listening on 5009. Now in a development environment, we've got a user secrets file where we can store user secrets that we don't want to expose to any configuration. So inside the terminal, we can initialize user secrets and that user secrets ID has to be specified in your CS proj. 
So we can see that that's what we've got set for our user secrets ID. And then we can do a .NET user secrets set. And the same as we had in our app settings, we can do Kestrel endpoints HTTP URL and set that to 5010. So now we'll be listening on 5007 and 5010. And then we're back to our launch settings again. Inside the launch settings, I can set another environment variable, which mimics again that structure from our app settings. So exactly as we had here, Kestrel endpoints HTTP URL. And basically at each level of the hierarchy, we just replace the hierarchy with a, a double underscore. So we get exactly that value. What are we up to? 5011. Run that up. And there we are on 5007 and 5011. Then last but not least, if I come over to a command line, I can specify that same Kestrel setting on the command line. And we see that we're listening on 5007 and 5012 if I do that. So well, that's it. That's all the options. So let's just go through them again in order so that we understand how we should set these things. So the default is 5000. Then we can set our launch settings, application URL setting. Then we can set the ASP.NET Core URLs environment variable. Then we can set the .NET URLs environment variable. Or we can specify on the command line the URLs argument. Or we can specify on the command line the dash dash URLs argument. And then inside code, we can specify the use URLs against the web host. Or we can use configure Kestrel. And both of those settings will override anything below them. But the Kestrel one here will always be present, even in addition to anything that we now have above it. So if we change our app settings.json to have a port, it will be in addition to the Kestrel settings that we set in the listen to any IP. We can then have an environment specific app settings that overrides that. For our development environment only, we can use our local user secrets file. Then we can have environment variable configuration override, which was the same as your app settings with the double underscores. And then last but not least, you can specify the command line argument, which again is the same structure as your app settings, but using a colon on the command line instead. The importance of knowing this is so that you can be sure that if you set your precedence right down here, then you've got all of these other options open to you in your deployment environments that you can utilize to override that setting. So I wouldn't necessarily mandate that you specify anything in code. You've got enough options here to specify the port without specifying it in code. In fact, the default project, as we saw, uses the application URL to set the port. So it's only one level above the default. So you've still got all of these other options open to you if you follow that pattern. So it's a good approach to have. And with that, I quickly need to thank my channel sponsors and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.